Good morning! Family, we are in the car and I wanted to come and show you guys this sunrise. It is so beautiful. If these cars would get the hell out of my way, I'm going to try to slow down so you guys can see that. Family, this is one of the most beautiful sunrises I've ever seen in my life. What are they doing? Are they fascinated with it just as much as I am? Because they seem to be breaking and I, I, I ain't got time for that. But y'all can see it, right? Isn't it beautiful? Oh my God. God is so amazing. Do you see that? But anyway, I hope you guys are having a blessed day or your day is starting off blessed and I hope that you have a very, very blessed rest of your week. I'm gonna switch this on around because I can't see the sunset no more. Sunset, sunrise, goddamn. It ain't nighttime, bitch, it's daytime. What the fuck? Why do I keep wanting to say sun, um, set, sun down, whatever the fuck. Um, but anyway, good morning, family. Today is Tuesday, September the 9th, 8th, 9th, yes, September the 9th of 2014. Um, we are just chillaxing on this, um, gloomy day. It's been gloomy for the last couple of days because it's been raining and all that good jazz. So it ain't really been much to do, but it's been kind of muggy, kind of humid and all that stuff. So I haven't really been doing too much. I've been in the house because as you guys know, I was under the weather and all of that stuff. So, and then a bitch come out the house this morning and this um, bitch, uh, this girl, her, she got her goddamn dog and the dog is trying to break loose from her so he can try to bite me. Okay, bitch. I hope you got some money. Cause bitch, I was going to be suing your motherfucking ass on today. Okay. I have not watched my love and hip hop. Atlanta season three ep season three episode. Bitch, get it right today, Thick Chick Vlogs. Season three reunion part three. That shit was ratchet as all outdoors. I'm not really gonna give you guys much of a commentary again this morning because I'm pretty sure y'all don't want to hear the same damn things that I said in that video. Let's just say that is a hot ass motherfucking mess. But um it's a couple of them people that really don't need to be coming back next season, like for real, because you know it's kind of pointless. To be really honest, um, and I heard rumors that Jocelyn and Stevie J are supposed to be getting their own show, nigga, for what? You know what I'm saying? So they can show nothing even more ratchet. Even though I will watch the shit, you know, I will watch the shit because they are entertaining. They crazy as hell, but they are entertaining. But um, I really don't think Ben, not Ben Zeno, I don't think Stevie J and Jocelyn needs their own show. I think uh, uh, Jocelyn and Stevie J needs some. Like he told her, he, he told her his damn self. <clears throat> Stevie J told Jocelyn, "You need some goddamn counseling." You know what I'm saying? You really do. Because she flies off the hinge and she's very insecure within herself. And Benzino had the nerve to sit there and compare her and, and Stevie J's relationship to, a, you know, a pimp and a hoe. Ain't that kind of fucked up? <clears throat> Baby. Now, <clears throat> you can't really talk too much. Because, uh, <clears throat> Hothina done smashed the homies. Not just your homies. Hothina done smashed quite a few homies. Okay. So don't don't sit there and and, and, and uh, uh, basically call Miss Hoffman a uh, prostitute when your when your fiance, aka wife, whatever the hell she is to you at this particular point in time, is just as big as a hoe as Hoffman Hernandez. Okay, so don't go there. She's a very beautiful woman, but she's still a hoe too. Okay, she smashed the homie. Apparently she smashed Nico, and apparently she smashed a couple of more folks too. Okay, so please don't go there, Benzino, Mister No Neck Benzino. Don't go there. Okay. Don't go to talk calling nobody's woman, uh, 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 no prostitutes, hoes, or anything like that when your woman is a hoe too, okay? All right. Just so you know, because I'm pretty sure if you you guys call up your engagement, I give her a month or two and she's going to be in somebody else's motherfucking bed, getting ready to move in their house and probably going to be engaged again. Y'all motherfuckers kill me with this whole engagement shit. Y'all kill me with that shit. Y'all be with somebody goddamn two months. You and you so in love that you got to get married. Motherfucker, for what? What is y'all rush? That's y'all goddamn problem. Okay, that's your motherfucking problem. You think you with somebody for two, three days? You gotta get married, motherfucker. No, that's what the Bible said. The Bible said you don't supposed to shack up. Okay, that's why your motherfucking ass get a goddamn divorce. Okay, you also needs the court. Okay, you need the goddamn court folks and you know kind of understand their ways and stuff like that. Because I promise you, okay, you really don't know somebody until so you done live with them motherfuckers until so you done been around them and stuff like that. And my thing is, is a lot of y'all motherfuckers sit there and get married to folks, and you don't even know they got them. You don't know my last name, but you want to marry me. And not only that, what I'm gonna need us to stop doing, ladies. Okay, I'm gonna need us to stop um, sleeping with dudes unprotected and all this type of shit. And you don't know his mama name, you don't know his sister name, 
You don't know where he live. You don't know where he work. Okay, you fuck around and end up pregnant. What you gonna do? Oh, you know him by his boo boo. What you gonna go? What you gonna do when you get pregnant? You can't find this nigga. You know what I'm saying? He changed the number on you. You didn't text him. You know the um, you didn't send him an um, the the I'm um late text and shit, and he not respond. What you gonna do? Okay, what you gonna do? You gonna uh, uh, take your chances and go on uh, Google and try to uh, type in his damn number and hope that his real name and shit popped up? Stop fucking niggas name Boo Boo and you don't know their real name. Okay, you don't know their mama or nobody. When if some shit pop off, you able to go to his mama house and let her know what's popping out. Stop doing that type of shit. I see that shit all too often, y'all. Fucking around with niggas you don't even know their goddamn last name. You don't know their favorite Boo. You don't know nothing about these niggas. You but you sitting there fucking them raw. I'm gonna need y'all to quit doing that type of shit. At least know their goddamn mama name, something. Because um, when you fuck around and end up around here knocked up, you're gonna be looking stupid when you go into the dance of the courthouse talking about something you need to file for some child support for Boo Boo. And gonna be like, who the fuck is Boo Boo? Okay. Well, what Boo Boo word? What Boo Boo mama name? What Boo Boo sister name? What Boo Boo do for a living? You know? Where he from? You don't know nothing. All you know is Boo Boo? You big bitches. Quit. Okay, quit. Y'all, let me tell y'all like this shit just popped off. Okay. Oh, you ain't gonna let me get over. Okay, bitch, we'll stay with you at then. Okay. But, um, let me tell you about this shit that popped off in the damn, uh, food stamp office. Okay. I'm thinking it's just a regular food stamp office. No, bitch. This is a food stamp office that's in my area. Okay. These motherfuckers are in Tuscaloosa, Alabama, fighting in the food stamp office, y'all. Yes. Now, if it ain't embarrassing, now, I, I'm not gonna say it's embarrassing to be in the food stamp office because it's not. You know, people falling hard times, all this type of shit. So I'm not gonna say that's embarrassing. But what's embarrassing is when you got a damn child in your arm and you fight. And you basically drop your child to fight. Um, literally, bam, drop him. And just, just get to fight. And then you got dudes. It was dudes in this food stamp office fighting women. When the police came eventually, they, they this is allegedly now. Um, but it, this, it was a, well, it's not allegedly because it was on the, 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 the news website. They said they get to the police station. The goddamn guy, I'm trying to figure out, nigga, how the fuck is you getting out of handcuffs? He hit the girl in the head with a crowbar in the police station parking lot. Nigga, isn't that serious? Y'all motherfuckers need to quit um all this old uh, uh, violent shit. And, and, and especially when you, look, I'm not, it, it's not just black folks, but it's us that they televising, okay? It's us that they make it public because they, they, they want us to look like even more um, animals, then sometimes we already make ourselves look. I'm, 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 I'm not finna sugarcoat shit, okay? I know a lot of times people want us to sugarcoat things and make things uh, seem like they are uh, uh, better than they are. No, they're not. Shit is fucked up, okay? We do sometimes act like motherfucking animals. We do. Okay? We do sometimes act like goddamn animals. I also want to speak on Ray Rice and his old dumb ass. He just sat there and, and, and KO'd his um, fiance at the time, and now, of course, she's his wife. Go figure, right? Go motherfucker figure. He um apparently it's allegedly that she spit on him and when they got in the elevator he um you know they had words exchanged and he uppercut her that ass and her head hit this damn the rail in the um elevator and baby her ass was out cold. Now at first they didn't really know what went on in the elevator. All they know all they remember was him dragging her out of the elevator. They you know, it was speculation that she was drunk and you know, all kind of shit. But come to find out when they got that TMZ be on that motherfucking shit, when I tell you TMZ got the video. This nigga in the elevator uppercut the shit out her. Her head hit the rail and she was out cold. I thought that bitch was dead for a second. And the crazy part about it is this nigga just stood there for a second like, you know, oh, well, he didn't really start trying to help her to the damn doors. Oh, my guess he figured, damn, I need to help this bitch up, you know, before um we draw too much attention, you know. But he knocked her motherfucking ass clean the car the fuck out. But the thing is, at the time, what's weird about it, okay, he knocked your ass out. But, uh... Not only did he knock your motherfucking ass out, but you married this man a month later. I'm confused as hell, okay? I'm confused as shit. Now, granted, you probably gave him a reason to knock your motherfucking ass out, but at the end of the day, at the end of the day, he still knocked your motherfucking ass out, okay? So, I'm, But I'm pretty sure that 50 mil had a lot to do with your decision making and marrying him anyway. We gonna keep it real on that one, okay? Like Beyonce says, a bunch of shit that go down when it's a billion dollars in the elevator. Yes, ma'am. It does. And I'm pretty sure, like uh, my girl e Eagle 79 said, I'm pretty sure it's a bunch of shit that go down when it's 50 million dollars in the elevator. Okay, honey. But, um, shit, I guess she figured, baby, I, it, it don't matter. I, it was my fault. Okay, it was my motherfucking fault. I shouldn't have did that to you. Okay? I gave you a good enough reason to knock my ass clean, cold the fuck out. That's what I'm assuming she did. Okay? Basically. Basically, I mean, if you put two and two together, that's pretty much what she said after she married him a month later, even though he knocked her ass 
clean cold the fuck out. Then he was dragging her ass out of the elevator. And then, you know, you got, um, I guess it was security or whoever the hell the people were, um, that were, they came over and woke her ass up for a minute. I thought her motherfucking ass was dead because she laid there for uh, a good little minute, lifeless. You know, he was picking her up and she was just, just limp. I thought she was dead, for real. I thought she had to hit her head and then knock some shit loose, okay? And I thought her motherfucking ass was, uh, you know, deceased around this motherfucker. But she got up and a month later she married Mr. Uh, Ray Rice, okay? And um, now that the NFL has done a little bit of investigation, they have suspended him indefinitely. And um, they didn't snatch that $50 million out from a bunch of his motherfucking ass. So, um, no, sir, you are no longer a millionaire. And they have suspended him from the NFL indefinitely. Um, so, I really don't know what the fuck that means. I don't know if he's going to have to reapply or whatever. But when you um, are classified as a woman beater, um, just like Chris Brown was, I mean, they're going to ridicule your ass for probably... Um, you ain't, Chris Brown ain't going to never hear the end of that, okay? I ain't saying. I'm just saying. And I also want to say to the ladies, look... What we need to do, we need to stop getting up in these niggas' face. I know a lot of, I know, you know, well, men shouldn't hit women. I understand all that, and I agree. But at the same time, a lot of times we provoke these motherfuckers. When you are, you know, when you back into a goddamn corner, that's just like a cat, okay? Let me give you a little example. If a cat is back into a corner, a cat's going to be nice, but when he's back into a corner, he ain't got but one way to come out. He coming out that motherfucker scratch, okay? So when you constantly are uh, net, pick, picking on a man, hitting him all in his face, spitting on him, all this type of stuff, that's provoking. Uh, okay, I understand, you know, a man is not supposed to hit a woman, but at the end of the day, you're not supposed to be putting your goddamn hands on him either, okay? So, that's what I'm going to need us as women to understand, that we can't just go around hitting on niggas and thinking, okay, I'm a woman, he ain't going to hit me back. Don't, 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 no. Stop doing that type of shit. It's not right for a man to hit a woman, but it ain't right for you to be hitting on him either, okay? That's why a lot of men say, you know, I don't hit women, but, you know, when I'm provoked, you never know shit. Motherfuckers black out. You know what I'm saying? Motherfucker been the blacked out and whooped, show up, whooped the shit out your ass. I'm talking about put you in an induced coma. Okay, so um, now we need to quit putting our goddamn hands on these dudes and things. Damn, it's like getting brighter shit, y'all. I'll be back Family, so day. me and my Mickey Mouse shirt are heading out of the Best Buy. I had to come back and get my money because y'all know that um, that charger that I was using was a boo-boo and it did not work. So I had to come back and get my money because I wasn't about to um, go out like Willy Lump Lump on that situation right there and um because i already picked up me another charger oh, man, so y'all know i had to come and find me a nice shaded spot because i wasn't finna sit in no goddamn heat and talk to y'all y'all already know what it is um but i wanted to come on here and i wanted to talk to y'all about something um that i thought about this morning that at, at the time when it happened i didn't really think too much of it but now that it happened and i had a chance to evaluate the situation i kind of see that it was a blessing in disguise and i'm going to explain to you exactly what i mean i'm gonna i'm gonna get a little bit more into that in a second so i'm already sure this is going to be a long ass vlog but um get you some goddamn coffee you know to listen to me you ain't gotta watch me because i really don't be doing a whole lot of shit you I, i'm the type of channel that you just really need to listen to okay you need to listen to my ass more than you need to look at me all right i ain't much to look at okay but um you know I'm, I'm more of a type of channel where you need to listen more than you need to look so you know wash some dishes and, and listen to me clean up your house or whatever um on your way to work whatever you know especially if you got a long ass commute listening to my big ass mouth you know that's the best time to watch my videos because i do like to talk but uh i was reading someone's status today on facebook and basically she was saying be careful who you envy um, because you never know what a person had to go through to get to where they are. Um, and you know, a lot of people, she said she get a lot, a lot of messages of people, um, congratulating her on her success. She's a big time makeup artist and all this stuff. But she said a lot of people don't know where she came from. You know, she said she went from making $65,000 a year to making $15,000 a year. She went from living in a really really nice home to have it to short sell her home which basically means you know you're selling your home for a lot less than what it's worth she also had to um go from that to getting on government assistance and she's a single mother she just she, you know it's, it was a, it's a lot of struggles that she um endured you know went through to get to where she is you know and that's why i tell people don't just think a lot of times that you know a lot of people think that shit falls into people's lap really don't you know that that that's the worst um way to think because you never know what type of fire and desire fire people had to go through to get 
to where they are. I just wanted to put that out there into the universe, but that ain't, that ain't exactly what I wanted to talk about. I just thought that was something that was really, really um, uh, uh, important to say that, you know, don't never envy someone, you know, because you never know what a person had to go through to get to where they are. But anyway, um, I wanted to come and talk to you guys about something that happened. That's why I tell people, look, I know I got all type of people that watch my videos. I got atheists that watch my videos. I have Christians that watch my videos. I have Muslims. I have... Um, What's the other one? I have Catholics that watch my videos. I have a whole lot of people that watch my videos, different religions and everything like that. Okay. Um, I'm not trying to convert anybody or anything like that, but I just want to tell you guys about a little bit about um, the God that I serve. Okay. I'm not going to necessarily, you know, I'm, I'm not preaching to nobody or anything like that. So if this isn't something that you necessarily want to listen to, that's fine. But um, just know that I respect everybody's religions and everything like that. I don't try to um, convert anyone. I just tell people um, about my God and, you know, and I let myself be an example of that okay so um let me tell you how god works in mysterious ways and when i tell you this this is something that i thought about on the way to best buy and i was like you know what i gotta turn on the camera and i gotta talk to my family about this um about i guess it was about two weeks ago whatever it wasn't even two weeks like maybe a week and a half ago whatever um i was having a really really bad day family i mean a bad day i was crying and i was driving at the time okay i was driving at the time i was having a really really bad day and i was like you know what um, I was just having all these crazy ass thoughts going through my head. I was like, you know what? I don't even know why the fuck I'm even here on earth. I mean, I, I just really don't. Like I said, I know I get on here a, a, a lot of times and I'm laughing and I'm kicking and I'm shooting the shit with you guys and all that stuff. But sometimes, you know, I really need somebody to, you know, message me every now and then and be like, stick to your blogs. How you doing? You know, I'm doing, I'm doing well. And I, I get a couple of y'all that do that, but I'm just saying, you know, I get on here and I do shoot the shit and I talk shit and all that stuff, but sometimes I be going through and I just need a shoulder to lean on. Even though I know I make people laugh and you know encourage people and all that stuff, but sometimes I need it myself. And that's why I tell people, um, live your truth because you never know, you know, how your truth will help someone. That's why I don't try to sugarcoat shit and everything like that. I let you guys know I've been through depression. I've been to the point where you know I felt like I didn't want to be here on earth. I felt you know I've contemplated suicide. I've been bullied. Um, I felt that I was ugly. I've been promiscuous. I've been all of that. You know, I, I live, I, I tell you guys my truth. I tell you guys things that I've gone through in my life in hopes that maybe it'll help someone else to let you know that, you know, you don't always have to, you don't have to do that. You know, I understand that people go through things, but that's not something that you have to do. It is a way out of those things. But anyway, um, I, like I said, I was riding down the road. I was crying real bad. I could feel my blood pressure going up. I mean, sky high family. I was crying so bad. I was starting to hyperventilate and everything like that. I could, it, it got so bad to the point where I can barely see. You know, I, I do go through those bouts of depression and everything like that to where I just, you know, I, I just, you know, I just, I, I be through with a lot. Okay. And sometimes I do skip a day or two of making a video or you can probably tell on some of my videos. I'm not as energetic on some of my videos. Um, those are probably the ones that... I'm kind of kind of feeling a little bit down, but I do like to make the videos anyway because it is therapeutic for me to make the videos, you know, and just reading you guys' comments and everything like that, it does help me. But um, I was riding down the road and I was um, crying, hyperventilating. I was, you know, I was just having a really, really badass day. And I have kind of a newer car. It's not a brand new car, but it's kind of a newer model car. And I get my car serviced and everything like that, um, like I should. But and I matter of fact, I had just got my oil changed and I got my wheel bearing and all that stuff fixed. Like man, it wasn't even a week before that, so my car was in tip top shape, you know. So I was um riding down the road and everything, crying, having been a lady. Then all of a sudden, my check engine light came on. Now, mind you, like I said, I was crying so bad to the point where it started to get to the point where I couldn't even see because my head was hurting so bad and I could, t I could tell that my blood pressure was skyrocketing. I mean, to the point where I could have probably passed out, stroked out, had an accident or anything. And all of a sudden, my check engine light came on. And I'm thinking to myself, like, damn, what the fuck is going on with my car? And I just don't have to glance down at it. And the first thing that came to my, my mind was, you know, you need to pull over. So I pulled over, and the first thing I did, you know, I kind of, you know, regrouped myself. And I went under my hood, and I pulled out my um, oil stick, because that's the first thing that popped in my mind. I was like, damn, well, maybe, you know, at the time that I went and got my oil changed, they were super busy. They, they lights had just cut off. They had a whole lot of appointments that were backed up, and they was getting cars out of the left and right. And I was thinking to myself, I hope these motherfuckers didn't, you know, uh, change my wheel bearing and forget to change my goddamn oil, because I was on 40% when I took it in there. 
I was thinking to myself, I hope they didn't change my wheel bearing and forget to change my damn oil. And now I'm riding around and ain't got no damn oil in my car. My check engine light came on. They finna fuck up my motor. So I did that and I pulled a stick out and, you know, I had a bunch of oil in it. And I'm thinking to myself, like, damn, okay, it's not my oil. Then I thought, you like, know, with these newer model cars, especially with mine, if I go and pump gas and if I don't turn the gas thing a certain amount of clicks, you know, until you hit a click, 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 my service engine light will come on and let me know I need to close my, um, my, my pump my gas pump thing and I'll go and tighten that up and it'll go off you know I got a whole lot of little indicator lights on my dashboard which is really good to let you know when something is wrong with your car for example like my tire pressure monitor system um thing been on but that thing been on for forever but you know sometimes you get those um computerized things and I got enough tire pressure in my tire it's just that motherfucking thing just won't go off and I got people to check it and it was like you know what well, them things are super sensitive you can hit a bump and it'll pop back on but anyway so I checked that that was fine and I'm looking around, looking under the hood, just trying to think. I'm like, damn, well, maybe I need a new spark plug or something like that. And I was like, well, no, I just got my spark plugs and everything changed. So it can't be my spark plugs. And I just said, you know what, Lord, I'm just going to get in the car. I'm going to drive and I'm going on home. I got home, family. I got home and I just started praying because, like I said, I was feeling so bad. I don't want to cry just thinking about it. But I was feeling so bad. I was feeling so down because, like I said, I, I go through stuff. I don't. I don't necessarily like to get on here and just talk about everything that I go through because, you know, that's just depressing. I don't, you know, I don't want to get on here and tell you guys every little thing that goes on me because, you know, everybody ain't, everybody's not, you know, here for your good. A lot of people want to see you down and all that type of stuff. They really do. But I, I don't like to get on here and, you know, all depressed and shit like that because that, that's just not fun to watch. I don't like getting on videos and everybody, you know, just crying and shit. No, I like to get on here. I like to be cheerful. I like to be happy-go-lucky and, and shit like that because I like to make other people feel good, even though I might not be feeling good myself. So I went in the house, and I just, all I could do was pray. I fell on my knees, and I told the Lord, I said, you know what? I, said, I don't I don't know what the hell is wrong with me. I, I mean, I knew what was wrong with me at the time, but it was just it was just so much that I was dealing with. I dealt, dealt with the whole lot. I was getting my car fixed. That was a whole lot of money. I dealt with, you know, just dealing with the, 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 you know, the people breaking into my mom's house, um, worrying about that, and it, it was just a whole lot of stuff that was going on, a lot of other things that I really don't care to really get into, and I just, I was like really, really tired, and I was really, really frustrated. When you get somebody who is, you know, um, I'm not going to say a weak person, but when you get someone who has a very, very sensitive heart, you know, any little thing can, you know, um, any little thing can trigger them to make them go into a state of depression and make them cry or anything like that and I'm one of those people and I was in the house and I got down on my knees and I was praying I just told the Lord just help me I mean I, I didn't know what else to do you know it, I, I didn't want to call my mom because you know mom she already going through a lot dealing with people you know person that broke in her house she's safe now she has a security system and all that she's good but at the time you know she was dealing with people breaking into her home my mom lost her son she lost my dad you know all of this stuff within the last couple of years I really didn't want to call her and you know plague her with any other stuff you know even though i know my mom she will listen but at the same time you know i don't i'm her daughter and she told me this herself you know i'm her child so of course she doesn't want to hear me um let me try to calm down because i don't want to start crying on this damn camera but you know she doesn't want me to be depressed she doesn't want me to feel bad so when i call her and I tell her I'm not feeling good and I'm, I'm crying and all this stuff you know it makes her feel sad and I don't want to make her feel bad but like I said I was I'm sorry I'm a, I'm a fucking water bag excuse me but um it makes her feel bad so like I said I got on my knees and I prayed to the Lord and everything like that and later on I'll never forget it I had to go I need some tissue and I don't have any but I needed to go to Walmart because I needed to get some stuff to cook. So, um, I got in my car and went to Walmart and all of a sudden my check engine light was gone, you know, and I'm thinking to myself like, damn, it was on all the way home. Like literally all the way home. It took like 45 minutes for me to get home to, from where I was. And it took me 45 minutes and all of a sudden it was off. So I'm thinking to myself, I said, you know what? As I was driving to Best Buy today, I just thought about that. You know, I didn't think about it at the time. I just thought at the time, I was like, okay, cool. My check engine light is off. But I thought about it at the time. You know, I was so depressed. I was so out of it. I was, you know, my blood pressure was shooting sky high. My head was hurting. I could, I could barely see, like I said, when I was driving down the road because I was crying so bad. 
that wasn't nothing but the Lord that turned the check and the light on. Because he know me. He know I'm a very paranoid person. He know I was going to pull over and I was going to try to assess the situation. But before I could assess the situation, I had to calm down before I can get it. Because I didn't want to. Because where I pulled over at, it was in a parking lot full of people. And I didn't want to get out of the car, you know, eyes all puffy and crying and hooping and hollering and shit. So, of course, I had to calm down. So I had to calm down and then I went out and I checked my dipstick and all that stuff and everything was cool, calm and you know, collected. So I got back in my car and that's when I left. I said, you know what, that wasn't nothing but the Lord turning that check engine light on for you to pull over and calm your nerves before you did something that where you hurt yourself. Not intentionally, because I wouldn't hurt myself intentionally. But you know, the fact that I was all depressed and I was all, you know, hooping and hollering and crying at that particular time, I could have had a very, very serious accident because like I said, my, I could feel my blood pressure just skyrocketing to the point where everything was just becoming blurry to where it seemed like I couldn't fucking see you know the shit was just everything was just super bright and then you know foggy and everything like that so it, like I said if it wasn't for that check engine light coming on I probably would have kept driving if I would have kept driving ain't no telling what would happen I probably would have stroked out had an accident and died you know it could have been anything a lot of shit could have happened but that's why I say shit have the Lord works in mysterious ways and you know i go through shit yes you know i go through bouts of depression and everything like that so yes you get me you see me getting on here and i'm hooping and hollering and i'm i'm laughing and i'm you know hey how y'all motherfuckers doing and all this type of shit but i go through things just like you guys go through things and that girl's post made me really think about that so never envy someone because you see that they have something or you see that they're doing something you never know what that person is going through and you never know what that person has to go through to get to where they are and like I said, every day is not like this. Every day is not like that day. You know, some days I might go weeks or months where I'm feeling, you know, totally fine. But there, sometimes there are days to where I'm just like, you know, I get so overwhelmed with things to the point where I'm just, you know, hooping and hollering and crying and I just can't stop. And a lot of people, I hate when people, one thing that I hate with people who, who never dealt with depression or people who have never, um, you know, people who have never been in, the, been in a depressed state, but I think everybody has had, you know, maybe been depressed before. It's a difference between being depressed and going through depression. It's a difference, okay? You get people who go through bouts of depression. Everybody has gone through bouts of depression before where they like, you know, they're down about, whether it be about a, a death in a family or shit, or you lost your job, anything. People go through those bouts, but people who, I'm talking about people who deal with this stuff on a regular basis, off and on. Um, so never, you know, you may see someone, you might see how somebody's living, you might see how somebody's doing, but you never know what that person is going through. So never envy people, you know, um, like I said, I, I, I thank you guys so much from the bottom of my heart for watching my videos and commenting and let me know, letting me know that you guys enjoy watching me and telling me that I make you laugh, which family y'all have no earthly idea how, how that makes me feel. We and I'm back. I had to dry my eyes and recoup, regroup, and all that shit because I didn't want to be on this motherfucker crying and shit. But you guys have no idea how that makes me feel when you guys tell me that I make you laugh. You've had a bad day, and you know, just watching my videos just makes you key key and all that stuff. That's honestly the reason why I do YouTube. Like I said, YouTube is, is therapy for me. When I'm feeling bad, sometimes I just want to record a fucking video about anything I don't have that's why I have the time I get on this motherfucker and I'm just I'm just motherfucking impromptu okay I'm impromptu and I just talk about any fucking thing okay I don't I don't give a fuck what it is what I talk about I just want to talk okay because it, it, it keeps my mind off a lot of things and when you guys tell me that you enjoy the videos and you you know I make you laugh and when you know you get off work and you've had a bad day and you watch my videos and it just make you feel better or when you're at work and you're going through you know your balls fucking with you and shit like that and you just turn on my video and it just make you feel better that means so much to me so I really want to say right now families that I thank you guys so much for watching my videos for commenting for sharing them if you guys are sharing them um I, I thank you guys really from the bottom of my heart because it means a lot to me that I have you guys watching me. A lot of you guys who are going through some of the th same things that I'm going through, I really appreciate you guys watching me and supporting me and all that good stuff and your sweet comments and your messages on Facebook and everything like that. It really, really means a lot. And I just want to say that my God is so good. He is so awesome. And I know that I might be going through things at a certain, at a, at a certain time, but I always know that, you know, just having a little bit of faith 
and knowing that tomorrow will be a brighter day and you know a lot of times you have to go through things to get to where you need to be a lot of times he's preparing you for greater things and you know you have to go through a little bit of something he never promised you that it's going to be all um sunshine and rainbows he never promised you that you're gonna have to go through a little bit of rain in order to get to um the sunshine and the rainbow so um i just want to I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and end this video here because i i'm i already know i'm i'm, I'm finna camera motherfucking ass somewhere and i'm finna get me um some ice cream or something because i bitch need some ice cream to calm her motherfucking nerves because um i done done the most today getting on these motherfucking video crying and shit but it's it's all in love we family i love you guys and um we we can talk like that because we family i really don't give y'all know me i really don't give a fuck i don't give two fucks about coming on here crying i really don't because like i said i like to share my truth because maybe one day it will help someone and um yeah so until the next time family i'll see you and remember never be ashamed to share your truth you know because it may just maybe help someone by family.